Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today I'm going to start fabricating a downdraft funnel dump system for a cutting table. And uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to be using the Strong Hand Build Pro table here. And you can see I've got the slats staggered to extend the work area. The, the top of the funnel, it's just a sheet metal funnel. I'm using 18 gauge cold roll today. The top of the, uh, the big side of the funnel is 56 inches. And so in order to get a big enough work area to where I can put stops and, and clamps and, and fabricate that really easily. I just staggered, took them all loose and staggered them and that gives me that, a way to do that. So the cutting table that I'm building this for looks something like this. Oh Nelly! Yep, plasma cam. So today I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut my uh, pieces for this downdraft uh, thing that's going to attach to the bottom of the plasma cam. I'm just cutting those with a skill saw today, a circular saw with one of those Diablo blades designed to cut sheet metal. And we'll see how that works. Now I ordered these pieces kind of trimmed down. I ordered them from Metal Supermarkets and I got them 56 by 33 and it only cost me a $20 cut fee to have that done so it worked out really well for me. This is the blade I'm using today made by Diablo seven and a quarter inch. It's, it rates uh, the RPMs are favorable to what my saw will put out so it's within the limits and it's rated up to eighth inch for ferrous metals so we'll see how that goes in just a second. I've got a straight edge clamped there, uh, inch and an eighth of an inch off the line. That's what it. That's what the fence on the uh, saw wound up being. So I'm going to slow it down to real time right here, just so you can get an idea on exactly how long it takes. I timed this cut; it seemed to be roughly 30 seconds from the time I actually started cutting until I got the the whole thing cut. And it's about 36 inches, roughly, about a 36 inch cut. So nice and straight and no issues and so far so good except that it kind of curled the tip there a little bit so that's an issue that uh, you have to deal with you have to you know slow down really a lot to you before you get to the end or something also safety equipment earplugs and a face shield are definitely part of this equation so we'll do this fast motion here so far, I'm really satisfied, but like I said, sometimes it curls the end up, and this this is only 18 gauge, pretty soft stuff, so I'm flattening it out here pretty easily, and then I'll do a little dressing work with a uh, slitting wheel, a cutting wheel on a four and a half inch grinder, and that will be no problem. In fact, while I had that four and a half inch grinding disc on the on the grinder there, I figured, well, I might as well make one cut with that and see how long it takes. Because that's really not out of the question to cut some stuff like this with a four and a half inch cutting wheel. And it took about twice as long. So it took 30 seconds with the uh, with the skill saw and then roughly a minute, a whole minute. And I'll, plus I had to change blades in between. Because uh, it takes a uh, really, I guess if I had a brand new blade on there, I might be able to make exactly one full cut. But I didn't. So it took changing blades midstream to do it but wasn't a wasn't a horrible affair I mean I could have actually done this whole job using this grinder here with a cutting disc on it also got to cut some little reliefs in the ends here and I'm just marking that with pocket knife <laughs> Leatherman tool put a scribe line on there because it's got some bolts and stuff underneath that uh, won't kind of won't make clearance if I if I don't cut it my face shield was getting all nasty so I made a little trip to Home Depot and bought some new earplugs and mask and face shield so cutting those little reliefs here with the uh, four and a half inch grinder and kind of deburn them a little bit no problem so I'm gonna put them up here with a little uh, riser piece to see exactly how they're gonna look put some stops on the table here and uh, this is an easy way I, I wanna check it along the way and make sure I'm not messing up make sure everything kind of looks like it's supposed to look and this is a good way to do it it's really quick here just kind of get an eyeball and see if everything looks like it's going to be like it's supposed to be and this is when I got to thinking and that's always a dangerous thing when I get to thinking I thought wow when I get all this thing all tacked up it is going to be bulky and hard to handle and if I have to move this plasma cam table to another location before too long it's going to be hard to do so I thought, what if I put some piano hinge on there instead of tack welding it? What will happen then? And next thing you know, I'm at Home Depot buying some piano hinge. And uh, 
figured, well, why not give it a shot? At least if I can tack it on the outside, I can cut the tacks loose if I have to cut it loose and move it. And uh, while I'm fabricating it, it, since I'm working by myself all the time, I never have, I never can say, hey, hun, will you hold this? Because I'm, I, there is no hun where I'm working in. Uh, so anyway, I figured I'll go with the piano hen just for ease of fabrication, if nothing else. And why not take a chance? See how it works. So far, it seems like it's going to be a good idea, but you know, things like this can fool you. You can picturing something unfolding in your mind can be deceiving sometimes. So I'm putting it up there again, making sure it, it uh, you know looks like it's going to work, and it still does. Still, so far, not a horrible idea. <laughs> looks like if I tack it on there, it will fold up flat again. But I'm going to tack it and uh, you know make sure I have been I have been fooled before. On something I anticipate and then you know turns out completely different and then I got to cut everything loose so just putting a bunch of tacks on here and this will tell the tale I put it up there again and unfold it and actually it's working out way better than I thought it would so every now and then I have a good idea I guess maybe I don't know but that looks like it's gonna work so I'll make this thing in two halves, and that'll make it a whole lot easier to put on the table. And it folds up when I, if I do have to move it. If I do have to move it, I just fold it up like this after I cut all the tacks loose, and I can just put it in the back of a truck or my Jeep or whatever and move it to wherever I want to. So I'm, I'm going to clamp some flat bar to the bottom of the plasma cam here, and then I'm going to tack weld to that. And this is how that looks from underneath. These are just some beam clamps that I've got. I'm going to clamp this underneath and then I'm going to fish the piece underneath, kind of hold it up and get a few tack welds on it and see how it looks from there. If I have to cut the tack welds loose, it won't be any big deal. I can just get that cutting wheel on the grinder, slice through the tack welds and start over again if I have to. So this is how working by yourself is. <laughs> use your feet, use your knees, use whatever you got to use. Use an old spool of Inconel 625 wire, <laughs> which is what I have underneath the, which I use for a spacer underneath there. But right now I'm using my knee for a little, you know, added force. And uh, so far so good. I think it's going to work. All I got to do is pull it out from the wall a little bit and put the other half on. But for right now, we'll shift gears. Here's what I decided to do at this point. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break from the project there. You, you can see I decided to put those piano hinges on there. It's kind of an afterthought. I thought I thought this thing's gonna be bulky and I may have to move it again. And rather than cut those welds all out, I, I'll just put the piano hinges on there and then uh, tack those on there and then tack everything else together. And if I have to, you know, seal it up with speed tape or RTV or something, that'd be no problem. I thought to myself, well, this doesn't really help anybody out as far as what I normally do on videos, tips and tricks. So, I'm going to take a break right now, and we're going to weld some outside corner joints in some of this 18 gauge and also some 11 gauge and maybe even some thicker stuff and see what these 115 volt MIGs will do. I've got one inverter power source, 140 amp inverter, that's the green one over there, and then I've got another another one made by AHP. It's, uh, it's a 115 volt MIG. It is a transformer style. So it's a little different. There are some differences in the arc and uh, differences in the capability. So let's go ahead and weld this first outside corner joint with just some of these scrap pieces of 18 gauge that I cut out for those reliefs. Set the wire feed speed to 100 inches a minute and I did that by pressing the trigger for 6 seconds and then measuring with a tape measure till I got 10 inches. Add a zero to that and you got 100 inches a minute. And that actually is working out pretty well. That's a pretty close setting here. It's nice and smooth, nice smooth arc. I just set the voltage to match on a piece of scrap. But now we're going to weld some 8 inch thick. So I've got to crank it up a little bit. I'm going to take a guess. And I'm going to set the wire feed speed on, you know, the uh, to what about what it needs for eighth inch thick metal. But I'm just guessing at the voltage, and we'll go from there. So my first stab is actually pretty close, just guessing. You can see, you can hear that arc is pretty darn smooth. 
but I increased the voltage a little bit thinking that would improve things and it did made it even better so that's the eighth inch thick going downhill eighth inch thick is about is about the cutoff for me as far as going downhill we'll see how it does I left the settings the same for this quarter inch outside quarter joint so I left the settings for eighth inch thick and you can see it's not exactly hot it's going to look okay but it's not exactly getting down into the bottom of that root where we'd like it to but just for kicks I left it the same just to see how it would weld we'll see what that looks like in just a second not too bad but what we're going to do is now is crank it up crank that wire feed speed up to about 90 percent of how it'll go and we'll adjust the voltage on a piece of scrap till we get it to weld smooth and weld another one another outside corner joint on the same quarter inch thick steel and you can see that's nicer that's hotter getting down into that bottom like it should be and I'm pulling this uh, you could push it you could pull it I'll do a little pushing in it on the next machine a little bit I just decided to pull this one out and uh, it's a good hot machine I've still got a lot to go on the voltage so if I went up to 035 wire I could go a lot hotter even on this little 115 volt MIG here alright let's swap over now to the AHP 140 alpha mig 140 and we're using 024 wire here have to set the wire feed speed higher 165 inches a minute smaller wire so it needs more of it and we'll start again using the thin stuff the the 18 gauge that's a smooth arc we'll tweak it a little bit and try to adjust a little bit here and there and that's an even smoother arc I think I just bumped the voltage up just slightly But with 024 wire on one of these little 115 volt MIGs, you can get it. You can get it tuned in to run really sweet. All right, so now we're going to go to eighth inch thick, and what I'm going to do is set the wire feed speed up to around 250 inches a minute, and then I'm going to set the voltage to where I get a smooth arc on this little piece of scrap there. So that's what I'm going to do using 024 wire, 250 inches a minute. That's what we get. Now, if you listen to this closely, I'll, I'll pump the volume up here on repeat this in just a second. Listen to this. You could hear a slight stutter in that arc. So what I did, I increased the voltage just a little bit and it got rid of that. Now it's ultra smooth. No stutter at all, just a nice smooth bead. So that's downhill eighth of an inch metal. Now eighth of an inch is about as thick as I want to go downhill, but that's a whole topic for another day. I'm going to go to a quarter inch and I'm pretty much going to try maxing it out everything and then weld on this little scrap piece of metal again and see where I need to go from there. And well, I'm max voltage and max wire feed and it, and it sounds like I have too much wire feed speed. So I'm going to bump it down just a notch, weld a little bit again and I hear it stuttering just a little bit stubbing a little bit so I'm gonna lower the wire feed speed just a little bit again and then that seems like that's gonna be a fairly smooth arc so now we're gonna weld the quarter inch at that setting max voltage but somewhere around 8 on the wire feed speed now to start with I'm pulling this and you can see it is not getting down to the very bottom of that root like you would want it to go it's maybe 80 percent so if I use a different technique or if I prop this thing uphill, I could get it done, definitely could get it done uphill, or I could get it done if I use CO2 gas instead of 7525, but keeping everything the same today. Now we're going pushing a little bit, and you can see it's flowing down in there, maybe a little, maybe 80 to 90 percent, but not really melting down into the root of the joint, so want a little bit more power for quarter inch thick here okay just got finished with all the outside corner joints and here's a couple of observations um, number one this is a transformer machine the AHP these are both 140 amp MIG machines this is a transformer style machine a little heavier weight wise maybe 10 to 20 pounds heavier and um, it seems to like a little less wire feed speed it runs it runs better with a little less wire feed speed than the Everlast I know from experience that this one runs really well with CO2. You can get a little bit more heat 
a little bit more heat out of the CO2 on this one, I know that. Let's take a look at that repair that I did a few months ago using this machine along with CO2 gas. I had to go weld a little doubler, so I used a quarter inch thick metal against a one eighth wall square tubing here on an engine hoist. And you can see that is fusing in, it is wetting in really nice to the front edge of the puddle because I'm using CO2 gas here, and that gives you a little more heat per a given voltage, especially with smaller diameter wires. So it's not like a cold weld that's getting really down into the root of the joint there, which is what I wanted because, again, it's an engine hoist. And you can see that the, the progression is actually somewhat a little bit slower than if you run 7525. It gives you a little time to adjust, and it gives a little time for the puddle to heat up and, and everything to fuse in instead of just mounting up and, and piling up. Okay, so you can see that was wetting in nice and it kind of was slow progression. Um, the Everlast seems to run better with a little higher wire feed speed, so it's a little stiffer, more pinpointed arc. Another thing is the wire feeder mechanism. The Everlast is a little bit more substantial wire feed mechanism, cast aluminum with a metal arm. This one's got a plastic wire feed mechanism here also. Not saying that's bad because I've got a Hobart 210 MVP that it welds like a champ, and it also has a plastic wire feed mechanism, and, and I really like that machine. So, arc is different. Transformer versus inverter. Also, the main thing would be the inverter definitely had more power at max amperage. I didn't even get close to max settings on it with the 030 wire using the welding on the quarter inch steel, and it was hot. So, that's typical. You're going to get more juice out of an inverter. That's what they do. Just remember though, just remember if you're in the market for a 115 volt MIG, make sure you got a 20 amp breaker. That's going to be the big, that's going to be the difference maker no matter what kind you get. All right, well that wraps it up for this week. Now I'm going to be doing some more on this little downdraft shoot here. I've got to get this plasma cam running and making some parts. Anyway, if you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button. Visit the store by clicking the red visit the store button or hit the thumbs up button and we'll see you right here next time.